Hey, man, what's wrong? I had a really terrible nightmare last night. Yeah? Yeah, I had a dream that Cyberpunk, after being in development for almost a decade, finally came out and it was just riddled with bugs and was basically unplayable. Well, bud, I'd say be thankful it was just a dream, but I got some news for you. Let's chat. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Party Chat. I'm Obey the Fist. And I'm Patrox. And the topic today is dashed dreams, something that all of us have been dealing with with alarming frequency in the past couple of years. I mean, 2020 sucked as a whole, a, a whole time period. It, um, but it was full of like little tiny disappointments just along the entire route that just made it worse. Um, and I know. Can we preface this episode? But I love you, bro. I just, we gonna get heated. I need to tell you that now. That's fair. Yeah, this is. Where to start? Uh, I mean, I hesitate to even say chronologically because we're gonna wind up thinking about things further back. All right, well, let, let's start as early into 2020 as possible by starting in 2019, December 2019, as a matter of fact. Man. Rise of Skywalker kind of sucked. Uh, like, the sequels as a whole kind of sucked. I mean, it's one of those things where... The, the, I think the, the overarching premise here is things that made promises that it failed to deliver on. And, yes, uh, the, the new trilogy definitely did not deliver on the promises that were made and quite frankly this is one of those things where like the promises were more implied by the nature of it being star wars rather than them specifically saying anything but at the same time star wars there's a bar and you luckily, gotta mando, meet or exceed luckily mando brought that bar yeah fortunately moving way it, back uh, up moving forward star wars is i think it is in, in a pretty great spot but that does nothing to detract from those movies being as unfortunate as uh, as they were. Yeah, and I'll say it: Final Fantasy VII remake sucked ass. Yeah. Uh, this, however, is a very specific case of somebody went to a Taco Bell for a sandwich <laughs> and thought the sandwich from Taco Bell was terrible, which it should have been. But Taco Bell didn't tell you you were getting a sandwich; they told you okay. you were getting a taco. All right. All right, all and right. because it wasn't a taco. <laughs> so, first we need to discuss the three words that I think are super important to this Final Fantasy discussion. Um, we're going to discuss the words remaster, remake, and reimagining, or retelling. I'll even take Redux. Uh, a remaster is when you take a game that's like maybe in 720 and you upscale all the textures to whatever and you maybe update the controls a little bit so they feel better and you're basically just playing the same game. Agreed. Okay? A remake is when you take a game that's old, but it's too old to scale up like that, so you just put the same game in a new engine. See the Crash remakes or the Spyro trilogy remake or Medieval Lots of really good games. A reimagining is when you take something that has a great premise and you flush it out a little more, you kind of twist some things around, like George Lucas's cuts of the original trilogy. That's a reimagining. Final Fantasy VII was advertised as a remake, and a remake it was not. Well, I mean, not to, not to enter the semantics dome here, but the... Star Wars that came out in 1999, those were called remasters, and then also had additional scenes I'm that didn't make it into the I'm also saying that they were wrong. Cut. Okay, so, oh, by, yeah, so this is strictly by your definition. No, this is the definitions. I can see how expecting Final Fantasy VII to be a completely faithful retelling of the exact same story. Absolutely, I can see why you would be disappointed. Okay. It but literally... that's not their fault. It literally says on the box art, a retelling of the story that you love. 
Okay, in the same way that doing a movie that came out in 1970 today. And usually those suck. And that's a remake, right? Or is it a reimagining? Uh, again, these terms are subjective terms. These are not objective terms. Look. So, yes, I understand. You can be upset that you misinterpreted their words. No. No, you don't get to play that card with me. Because it's not just me. I'm not the only person in the world. Right, and I feel the way. same way about all, like, all of you guys. They called it something that it wasn't. Fortunately for us, what it was, was still good. Slightly above average at best. And I will admit that there's certainly no chance of there being bias based on your personal feelings about the game towards that. Okay. But, uh, no, that, like, what's... Or what is your... your nostalgia goggles clouding your I'm not the judgment? one who wanted the same thing, dude. Okay. I played a game that was fantastic. That's it. Combat was slow and grating. Cloud moved like a fucking brick. If you and were, if you were swapping, in that tank mode, yeah. The character swapping was a gimmick at best. What do you mean character swapping was a gimmick at best? Like the, the need to you should, swap you should characters not have had, You should not have been able to swap characters? No, I think leaving it there as an option was good. Making it a core gameplay mechanic made combat grading and... Okay, okay, that's... I will concede that point. Because it does suck to have to... Like, in order for your two AI to do anything, you need to control them. You need to be setting commands. The, the, the pausing... I would have preferred had the combat been more like Kingdom Hearts in the sense that once you were in the menus doing stuff, combat didn't stop around you. That being able to freeze time and, and uh, like issue orders, like combat was a slog and it was grating and it was also easy because of it. I mean, <laughs> again, that's the way, like you could do that in original Final Fantasy VII, so. No, it's because Final Fantasy VII was a turn-based game. Correct. Uh, but I, I will absolutely... Commit to one side or the other. Don't play both. There's my standing. I mean, dude, unfortunately, you're talking about a lot of really incredible games when you say don't do it like that. I can't think of one other game I really like that, like... The whole Dragon Age franchise. I think the, the, the point is, with Final Fantasy VII, though... It's a fantastic game. Made promises, didn't deliver. I think in terms of this being Dash Dreams, yeah, man, it sucks that y'all had that It doesn't have to be everybody's Dash you. Dreams. It could just Correct. be most people's. Correct. Because like, uh, there are people out there that think Cyberpunk runs perfectly fine and hasn't done anything wrong. Well, Cyberpunk is a great game if you own a $4,000 gaming computer. How dare you plebeians ugh, play on anything less? Yeah, there's... That's coming from a PC gamer, by the way. Yeah, the... Cyberpunk, I, I, I don't even think we necessarily need to continue beating this dead horse. Oh, no, we um, do. Dash Dreams, 2020, go. Yeah, for... for it was supposed to revolutionize uh, third-person action First role-playing person. games. First, First person. person, yeah. I mean, Third-person mode would have been great, was, but we didn't get that. Yeah, it, it, it was supposed to revolutionize first-person RPGs, and it certainly did not. Um, even now that, like, I'm, for, I'm one of the fortunate few that doesn't have a whole lot of uh, game-breaking bugs, but, like, you know, after the honeymoon phase is over, um, like, it's good. Nothing is really super revolutionary about it. I'm sorry, when a eight-year-old game on an outdated engine, has better better movement physics, better gunplay, better driving physics, and a better AI. Just play modded GTA Five, and you had the cyberpunk experience. Again, I think once they, you know, the the legendary edition or whatever the hell they're gonna call it comes out, um, it's gonna be a fantastic RPG to play. But. You know, we were expecting the next big thing, and what we got was the same kind of experience that, like, The Outer Worlds was. Like, yeah, fun, quirky, dope, mm -hmm. having a good time, but 
not what it was we've to be. we've all played Skyrim. Like <laughs> you know, we've all played Fallout. We 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 get it at this point. I think it would be incomplete to have this discussion without bringing up Anthem, uh, because Anthem is another one of those games that you know all the trailer like it was going to completely change the way we thought about third person looter action RPGs the destiny killer yeah and a and a destiny killer at that which is i i'm not a huge fan of games being called the this thing killer like just 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 be yourself man honestly at this point i think any game that's been called the x killer that's never that. happened. Yeah. That's never happened, by the way. Anything that was called a X killer did not kill X. Looking at you, Star Wars The Old Republic. Looking at you. Yeah. Yeah. The that's WoW another killer. one. Final Fantasy XIV was supposed to be the WoW killer. And you know, and that's what not the one? Rift? Rift was also supposed to be the WoW I killer. I completely forgot Rift was a thing. And I played Rift for like a week. Wildstar. Uh, Wildstar, okay, Wildstar is a weird one, right? Because Wildstar had everything. I think it had all the elements, I just don't think it had them in the right order. Like, they, they had all the pieces to the puzzle, but just never put the puzzle together. Yeah, like, I could, the, like, I cannot tell you for the life of me why that game would have failed. Because every individual element was perfect. Combat was amazing. You had the, 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 the telegraphed areas on the ground like even when there were a bunch of people like in pvp it didn't feel too muddled and housing was incredible for anybody who's really into that like some of the how some of the plots i saw were crazy people just made rooms to put the shit that they found because there was so much of it the customization was great i loved that cartoony sci-fi element to it Every single individual piece of that game was perfect, and for some reason, you put it all together and nothing happened. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Like, I think, I think part of it might have been the fact that people got to Endgame and was like, oh, nobody else is here yet. Fuck it, I'm going to go back to one of the other six MMOs stop, that are out right stop, now. Stop, 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 stop. They went, fuck it, I'm going to go back to WoW. I mean, that's definitely one of them, but, like, people were also playing that. Uh, uh, Swotor was still doing all right when this was happening. Mm, okay, fine. I mean, yeah, dude, like, just, just call a spade a spade, dude. I don't think MMOs are ever going to do anything ever again. Anybody that wants to play an MMO can just play WoW. And Yeah, that's... I feel like we've kind of used up the design space there. Yeah, the um, at, least until, at least until Full Dive... VR nonsense happens, and even then, WoW will adapt to that. Mm, God, one can only hope. But, oh, uh... God, damn it. And I'm not gonna get to live to see that lifetime. I mean, who knows, man? By the time we're old and ready to die, maybe we'll already have the that altered carbon tech where they can just put our consciousness on, like, a USB... And then we can just get plugged into the server and then be NPCs. Speaking of dream ki dream dashers, sexy vampire lady from Resident Evil 8. Yeah, wow, what a... Here I thought I was, here I was, thinking I'm going to enjoy a Resident Evil game. Now I know I can't play it because she's going to be like, you know, come here and I'm going to be like, Kay. okay. So I know this next one's going to be a real hot button issue for, issue for you because you like the game and you think that I haven't played it, so therefore I don't get to pass judgment. Um, I don't think Godfall was what we all thought it was going to be. I will, I will concede the point that it definitely made promises that it didn't deliver on. Um, again, this was a game that leading up to, we, uh, you know, we were stupid hyped for. And then, you know, I... Loved the experience, but at the same time, this was supposed to be something that, like, this was something that was going to last. And without there being other people that want to play the game, um, you know, I got to end game. I did a little bit of the end game content, was like, okay, this is going to be way more fun when there are other people. And then nobody showed up. Uh, largely because I think the uh, 
I'll say this, it probably, ideally, not a $70 experience. I think that for, you know, 40 bucks, steal. Um, and that's not to say I didn't get my money's worth out of it because I got way more than 70 hours worth of gameplay. But, especially coming from Gearbox, uh, who, because Borderlands is a game that did, the original Borderlands did absolutely revolutionize uh, the way, you know, loot explosion games are handled. Yeah. But uh, for, for, for that pedigree to fall flat again kind of makes you think that they got lightning in a bottle the one time and may not wind up seeing that again. Hot take. The entire generation's been kind of a letdown so far. I mean... I have not had a game yet that was like, oh, this is the next gen experience. Like, yeah, the generation's been lackluster up to this point, but, like, we're still only two months in. Okay, but, like... Like, what was the, like, the big banger when the PlayStation 2 came out was Fantavision. Okay. Like... <laughs> but usually there's at least one or two gems in the pile, and I really just don't feel like we've gotten there yet. I, I don't even feel like... Like, in terms of launch games, I don't even think... Because, what, for PS3, it was, what, Lair? Heavenly Sword? I guess every console generation sucks at launch, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't, like, nobody's had a really, nobody has a banging launch season. Like, and I think it's crazy that we all forget this. We, How <laughs> do we forget this? I mean, I don't. I know that, I know going in that there's going to be a few things I'm going to enjoy, but bangers don't start coming out until... A year in. Close to a year in. Um... Oh, you know, fuck it. While we're at it, Dream Dashers, Kingdom Hearts 3. Like, yeah. let's talk about yeah. a game that you wait 15 years for that comes out and it just sucks. I'm sorry. The game sucks. Yeah, again, it was this, it was this thing where, because like, I don't, again, I don't think the game like was terrible, but. I do. This is, this actually speaks to, I think the larger problem is Devs, quit trying to sell us the game. We'll buy it if it's good. And if you tell us it's better than it actually is, we're going to be mad about we're it. We're going to be mad about it. If so many of these games had just been these not overly theatrical productions where we get this teaser trailer and then a couple of months later, later we get this cinematic trailer... And then you give us a gameplay trailer, which isn't even actually a gameplay trailer. You know, you're going to build our expectations to the point where you can't possibly meet them. Just stop, and we'll start liking the stuff you do again. I mean, yeah, dude, if you don't give us the dreams to have, they don't get broken. If you don't tell me I can fall in love... I won't get my heart broken. You know what's heartbreaking? What's heartbreaking? The lightsaber's getting low. Oh, that it is. That means that's our show. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, I'm Patrox. I'm Obey the Fist. We'll see you later.